steam locomotive. That great, big, magnificent machine. We had some pretty good ones, and we had some outstanding ones on our railroad. In 1922, the mountain type was the latest thing in motive power. But hotshot trains got heavier, and had to go faster, and engines to run longer. And when more than once, one of these big 482s out of the roaring 20s couldn't make the grade in the competitive 30s, the boss said to get something better. The new 800 class northern type needed to be the best ever seen on an American railroad. We could tell from the design, all through assembly at the American Locomotive Company in Schenectady, New York, to the first test trains, that this was going to be a thoroughbred, a 90 mile an hour, 484 roller bearing beauty. to it for ease of maintenance or ease of operation. It was just a first-class steam locomotive. Mechanical engineer made the remark that people in American locomotive thought the 800 class was the best team engine that his locomotive worker had ever built. The people on this Union Pacific Railroad think that it is their locomotive. They're very proud of it because it's their locomotive. Originally, when it was delivered, we called that the 844. They renumbered so they could keep a, a normal sequence in our diesel locomotive. We still all think of it as an 800 locomotive. It's the nostalgia of steam. There are so many people now that have never seen a steam engine. I think it's the parents and grandparents talking to children that have never experienced the sight of a steam engine or watched it operate, that probably brings it on. People love to hear the various whistle sounds by individual engineers and tell them how to start putting the coffee on, I'm headed for home. the whistle and a certain rhythm in the whistle to tell them this is me that's coming. That type of uh, what we term the steamboat whistle, which was a low moaning type whistle. People are always asking how fast it will go. They don't 
think anybody knows you could just go faster and faster until you run out of nerve. But that's all speculation because now we don't run over 55 miles an hour. They made the same run day after day. So the engineer didn't have to get out his watch and look at the mile point to see how fast he was going. He knew the way the engine went down the road, the way it went around the curves. He just felt how fast he was going. I said, I've always wanted to ride one at 100 miles an hour. The brakeman said, well, if you get it up to that, I'll buy you a cigar when we get to Green River. And after leaving a 70 mile an hour restricted curve, we attained the speed of 100 miles an hour. It was a good cigar. Riding an engine wasn't something you learned out of a book. You had to have a feeling to see your pants. And it just seemed like engineers were born, not always made. You look over and see those side rods and the valve motion moving back and forth very fast. There's 11,000 pounds of force on that main field. It has to be a massive machine to handle that force. You feel the motion of the wheels and the side rods. You can't help but feel that. But the locomotive is so balanced that you don't get any major whipping action or anything of that nature. You feel more of the track undulations than you do of the machinery itself. The rail fans are the main purpose of the trips. The rail fans want smoke and noise. They like a lot of whistle, a lot of smoke, a lot of pounding of the rods. They really enjoy listening to the engine bark. The louder you make it, the better they like it. When you see the enthusiasm that these people have for the old steam locomotive, it, like I say, is contagious, and it's a pleasure to see someone getting the pleasure that they do out of this. The rail fans never seem to get enough of the locomotive. They never seem to lose their enthusiasm, never get tired of it. People want to know what makes it go, how fast does it go, how do you start it, how do you stop it. And then, of course, there are myriad valves in the cab. They always get the feeling that, uh, boy, you really have to be a wise guy, a smart guy to handle all these valves. One lady over at Denver, I guess, is she must be 90. She still comes down to see the local mother. The most memorable trip in my mind was when we started at Omaha covered the western states and went around up at the World's Fair in 1974. Hundreds of thousands of people viewed that locomotive from the time we started from Omaha until we arrived at Spokane. We picked up flags from the states that we traveled through, carried them all the way into Spokane. satisfaction to make a, a good run with them. They really got out and made good time. It made you feel like you were accomplishing something and it was nice being an engineer. ascending cloud of steam, the gleaming brass, a mighty moving arm, and on a main the mass comes thundering, like an avalanche for the quaking earth. A thousand faces pass, a moment, and are gone, like whirlwind sprites, scarce seen, 
So much the roaring speed, the night's all sense and recognition for a while. A little space, a minute, and a mile. Then look again, how swiftly it journeys on. Away, away, along the horizon, like drifted cloud to its determined place. Power, speed, and distance melting into space. Thank you.